have been asked what I think is the most difficult obstacle facing a prospective author. Most people expect the reply to be the dreaded writer's block, but that would not be my answer. Without hesitation, I would say, Joyce Carol Oates. I marvel at Joyce Carol Oates. It is one thing to be prolific. It is another to be Joyce Carol Oates. She is an industry, a force of nature, a goddess of fruition, not a person. She is a Niagara of the word. She is oats. She is feeling her oats. She is sowing her oats. She is oats upon oats upon oats. Her subject matter is limitless. Sports, horror, romance, coming of age, midlife crisis, senility, young adult. She writes poetry, essays, criticism, opinion pieces, journalism, nonfiction, short stories, and novels. If that list misses anything, she writes that too. She is ubiquitous. She is literally and literately everywhere. How she does this is a mystery. A school humbly decides that it will begin a literary magazine. Among the Virgin staff there is a mixture of anxious insecurity and profound purpose. It's an annual publication, and from the very first number, each year may be its last. It exists on a mixture of slavish dedication, inspired idealism, goodwill, handouts, and a pinch of grant money. You know the look. The cover is heavy, uncoated stock, ragged edge, the pages folded and stapled inside. The school is Northeast Southwest Central Tennessee State Junior College. NFS WCT SJC. The publication is called Holler. It's raw and proud of it. It wants to make noise, sound off, deliver the clarion call of the wild. It wants to be new, fresh, untested, vibrant, chaotic, alive. In all modesty, it is after all an initial effort and a juco production at that, light years away from the Ivy League. But with a rising sense of destiny, the eager editors of Holler announced their existence and put out a call for submissions. New and established authors both are welcome, poetry and prose, stories and criticism, photos and ink drawings, crayon graffiti, whatever, just send. The hopeful declaration is posted for all to see on a bulletin board in a hall outside the office of the chairperson of the NESWCTSJC English Department. It is hard to see, amid the announcements for job opportunities in related fields, graduate studies, and the postcards of students looking for an apartment or needing a ride home. After three days, it is buried under a Xerox picture of a comedian who will be appearing in the cafeteria at noon next Thursday. The photo looks like a mug shot, with front and side views, except that the comedian is wearing a goofy hat and an equally goofy grin. His name under the picture, along with the words, So What? You might think that Holler will be publishing the work of its staff. Yet, lo and behold, the appeal for submissions is not a week old when a story comes through the mail from Joyce Carol Oates. A letter bomb from international terrorists could not be more astonishing. The editors, hyperventilating, their hands shaking with excitement, eyes wide with disbelief, and then awe, sit and read her letter, wishing them the best in stunned silence. Joyce Carol Oates, it's really her. That's her signature. This is her story, her original unpublished story. She's written it just for them. They frame her letter and put it on the wall. Holler is, all at once, perforce, on the literary map. Their ship of dreams has arrived, laden with cargo more precious than silver chalices and golden doubloons. They have been blessed by the goddess. She is their ticket to the show. Holler will be bound and collected by libraries across the nation. Holler will be called a fresh new voice in the literary community. Holler may very well win a prize and more grant money, along with prominent mention in an anthology of the year's best stories, which will include the one, perhaps several, by Joyce Carol Oates, as first published in Holler. Hearts bursting, the editors print the debut issue, announcing right on the cover that they are proud to publish for the first time an original piece of fiction by Joyce Carol Oates. 
They write to her, enclosing five complimentary copies of that first issue, now a collector's item. They thank her for sending the story and inquire if she would possibly be interested in delivering a lecture, a series, a term, at N-E-S-W-C-T-S-J-C. She writes back, expressing regret. She will be unable to visit in person due to prior commitments, etc., etc., but she includes another unpublished story, a few poems, a one-act play, and a set of twelve original lectures on the general topic, neo-romanticism, in the novel. And she invites the editors to either publish the lectures or deliver them for her in her absence. Almost miraculously and inexhaustibly, Joyce Carol Oates appears in every subsequent issue of Holler. Budding authors in the school are told their manuscripts have been accepted and even typeset, but they're being held for future issues because the editors have received another story from, can you believe it, Joyce Carol Oates. Yes, it's like a dream, a fairy tale, and Holler is like the magic purse which never runs out of coins, no matter how many you remove. Joyce Carol Oates is always in there, the way flour is always in bread, the way water is always in the ocean. And it's no disgrace to be bumped by someone like Joyce Carol Oates. She is, after all, my God, Joyce Carol Oates. The budding authors graduate with their work still on hold. Meanwhile, Joyce Carol Oates is also appearing in every other literary magazine in the nation, as well as foreign journals, as well as contributing to popular monthlies, as well as producing books of poetry and novels, at the rate of about two and a half a year. Stephen King and his vaunted word processor have absolutely nothing on her except perhaps monsters and blood, and it seems certain that she will rectify that lapse in time when she turns her awesome attention to gore and spatter. Look out, Stephen. Anne Rice, prepare to duck. She may follow that with a sortie into legal fiction. Beware, Grisham. Tremble, Tarot. Clanc Clancy, Collins, Weller, Mailer, in time all will be swept aside buried under the incoming tide of oats. The only conceivable remedy to this situation is to found a new and specialized publication. This one will not accept or publish any work by Joyce Carol Oates or about Joyce Carol Oates, nor will it run to the best of its ability the work of Joyce Carol Oates under an assumed name, like Sheila Singer Wheat, Lila Yodel Barley, or Ellen Aria Soy. The title of this new magazine will be Nothing by Joyce Carol Oates, abbreviated No Oates, or just N-O, No. That's its statement, that's its reason for being, to shout No. Its editors might also launch a sibling publication, Nothing by Stephen King, a.k.a. The Abdicator, i.e. No King. Of course, these publications will be short-lived, having no readership, no money, no impact, and no oats.